Take your Bible and turn to Luke chapter 2. This time of year has been a bittersweet for me. I uh, always enjoy this time of year. But, uh, take your Bible and turn to Luke chapter 2 and uh, pick up verse 1. Luke chapter 2, verse 1. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus Augustus, that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger." And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the same which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at, the ha- at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. As I was reading this passage, trying to decide what the Lord want me to preach this Sunday, a verse that was dear to Rebecca's heart jumped out at me. And that was verse 19. It says, But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. I want to preach on the pondering of the heart at Christmas. The pondering of the heart. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, I pray that you'll take and be with the services this morning. I pray that you'll bless them. I pray that we'll take and uh, be filled with your Holy Spirit. I pray that you'll take and give us things to rejoice in in this time of season. And I pray that you'll take and uh, remind us of the great gift that you've done and the great blessings you've given us. I pray that we'll take the opportunity this year to tell someone why you came. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, around, I'm sure that Mary had a lot of things to consider as a... Uh, The events that happened not only with her, but around the birth of the child of the Lord Jesus Christ was a little bit unusual, to say the least. And uh, she had plenty of things to ponder. The word ponder, the definition means to weigh in the mind and to consider, to examine with intellectual operation. In other words, you think about it. (laughs) And uh, you keep it in mind. And uh, there's, when I sat there and started studying this, I was like, I wonder what the things were that she pondered. Well, the first thing I'm sure was the virgin birth. The virgin birth. 
uh, of all the things to her, that must have been the most unusual. Uh, take your Bible and look at Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1 and look at verse 26. Luke chapter 1 verse 26. It says, And in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. And he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. Of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Now, the virgin birth is an absolute necessity in our belief. Why? It showed that Jesus Christ was different than any other man. Uh, without the virgin birth and the re literal resurrection of Jesus Christ, our belief in what we believe about Jesus Christ is absolutely vain. Those two doctrines are absolutely necessi necessary. Uh, if you do not believe in the virgin birth, you do not believe in Jesus Christ as to who he really was. Uh, you're believing in a false Christ. If you do not believe in the literal resurrection, you do not believe in the gospel and in Jesus Christ the way you should. It's, uh, you got your doctrine messed up. Those two doctrines are absolutely necessary. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14, it says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall, con shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And so it's prophesied in scriptures and uh, Mary believes this and she's willing to be the vessel. I'm sure she pondered the virgin birth in her mind. And some people say, you believe in a virgin birth? I absolutely believe in the virgin birth. And you know, with that comes a reproach. Now Mary had a reproach that came with the virgin birth. Uh, in John, in the book of John, look at verse 8. John chapter 8, and look at verse 39. It says, Then answered and said unto him, Abraham, uh, this is the Pharisee answer, Pharisees answering Jesus Christ. They said, They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then they said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one Father, even God. You know the reproach that Mary had to have? Now I'll tell you, anybody in the Bible, the one that would know the reproach of Christ would be Mary. She would know the reproach of Christ because she had a bad reputation because of Christ. Uh, here these Pharisees are bringing it up. We aren't born of fornication. In other words, those who do not believe in the virgin birth don't believe it because they want to reject Jesus Christ. They want to reject Jesus Christ. Now, if you believe in the virgin birth, how could you reject Jesus Christ? I mean, if you believe he was born of a virgin, how could you reject him? And uh, they... Uh, want to reject him. The Bible says, let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. If you want to be close to Jesus Christ, you have to be able to bear the reproach of Jesus Christ. 
Now, can you imagine being Mary? Mary was able not only to conceive the Lord Jesus Christ, but was able to raise Him from a child. Now, that's a closeness that me and you do not understand. Uh, can you imagine that, being able to raise the Lord Jesus Christ? Sitting there, cuddle Him as a baby, raise Him as a child. The Lord Jesus Christ, her God and her Savior, which she knows that's who He is. And she gets the privilege of raising. That was a closeness. But with a closeness to Jesus Christ, there comes a reproach. Because people would not believe that Mary had that child by, as a virgin. Her own fiancé had trouble with that one. And an angel had to show up. Now, I'm, I'm going to give you an illustration of this, and kind of, it'll kind of show the picture of your mind, and forgive me if it doesn't seem appropriate, but it gets the point across. Years ago, before when I was first called to preach, before I went to Bible school, I was pretty young at that time and quite naive. I uh, lived in a trailer and a couple doors down, there was this old trapper that lived there. And I became real good friends with him. And uh, his daughter moved in. And when his daughter moved in, I was always over there. We kind of wound up sparking up a friendship and stuff and was spending a lot of time together. And as time went by, she was a very attractive woman. I wound up getting some feelings for her. And uh, there were some things about her that was just off with me. So I took and uh, wound up introducing her to an older lady that I knew who gave me some advice on her. And that lady's advice was, this gal's leading you on. She's not interested in you at all. And uh, she always says, oh, we're just friends, we're just friends, we're just friends. And to her, that's all we were. Well, if you're a young man, don't ever be just friends with a young woman. That's a bad, bad thing to do. <laughs> and uh, it, it just doesn't work. <laughs> All right? So, uh, so she told me what to do to find out what she was telling me was the truth. This older lady did, so I did it. And she was right. And, uh, so, and she said, you gotta, you got to end this thing. What you're doing is not a very good position for you to be in. So I cut that thing off. And uh, she had warned me, I said, now when you do this, this girl, she's, she's using you as her insurance policy. She's going to call you up six months, year down the road, telling you how much she loves you, and asking your forgiveness, and all this stuff, and trying to get back with you. I said, don't, don't fall for it. And I was like, okay. Well, what happened next would definitely make me not fall for it. Somewhere where right before or right after I cut that thing off, this woman came with child. And uh, I wasn't too uh, brilliant in school, but I kind of knew a little bit about biology. And, uh, you know, it kind of came up with the last child that we had. Kids finally asked the dreaded question. How did that baby get in mommy's stomach? And uh, we told them the truth. I said, when parents love each other, they kiss, and after kissing comes babies. You know, that's <laughs> biology. And I knew that, and I'll tell you, I knew that from a young man. That's why I never kissed a woman. I'd never kissed this gal, so I knew that was not my baby. And besides that... Afterwards, that baby was a wrong color. <laughs> I mean, you know, that thing just, I was safe. And uh, six months to a year down the road, I've been down to Bible school for three, four, five months. This woman calls me up. Sure enough, that older lady nailed it on the head. She calls me up. Tell me how much she loved me, how much she wanted forgiveness and all this stuff. Well, I had met a gal in Bible school, and uh, we talked once, and the girl had smiled at me. So I made it sound like I had fallen in love, was fixing to get married. It wasn't nowhere near. We'd talked once. <laughs> and uh, never heard from that gal again. But uh, 
But if an angel had showed up to me and said, fear not to take this woman to be your wife, let me tell you, that angel would have showed some very serious credentials to his angelhood before I'd have bought that. And uh, you, uh, you sit there and say, well, they had a hard time believing the virgin birth. Joseph was a man of quite some faith. <laughs> that's all I got to say. I mean, that's quite some faith. And, uh, but it was a virgin birth. And you got to believe that with faith that the Lord Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. And His life should prove it to you. And His death and His resurrection should prove it to you. And uh, I'm sure that the pondering that was in Mary's heart was the pondering of the virgin birth. It proves His deity. In Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1 Verse 41 through 43, look what Elizabeth says about the child while it's still in the womb. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Now don't you realize that Elizabeth realized the deity of Jesus Christ while he was yet in the womb? The virgin birth proves the deity of Jesus Christ. And uh, if you have the proof of the deity of Jesus Christ, you should have understand the pr proof of the virgin birth. That's something that you... Uh, and Jesus Christ wasn't just any person that was born. It was God in the flesh that was born on this earth to pay for your sins and my sins. That was Jesus Christ. And the virgin birth proves that. I Number like, two. I like him. Amen. So do I. Number two, she pondered the impossible can be done by the Lord through you when you submit to Him. Look at Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1, verse 35. Luke chapter 1, verse 35. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who is called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Now, uh, that's quite something. Uh, I wonder what would have happened if Mary said, you know what, that don't sound so good. Get someone else. And, uh, but when you submit to the Lord, you know the Lord can do anything with you that He wants. Anything. You know, the key to a good disciple is submission to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not saying submission to every thing that's out there saying submit to the Lord Jesus Christ and the Lord can do anything through you I'll bet you Philippians 4 13 meant a lot more to Mary than it did to most the Bible says I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me um, in Jeremiah 32 27 it says behold I am the Lord the God of all flesh is there anything too hard for me? I'll tell you, after Rebecca died, I looked at staying here, I said, it's impossible. There's no way I can do that. Yep. I'm better off right now when it comes to some stuff than I was then. Some stuff. And uh, you say, what is that? Well, the Lord takes care of you. I've seen the Lord taking care of me in ways that just blows my mind. 
blows my mind. You say, what is he going to do with you? I don't know. Anything he wants. Anything he wants. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. There is no limitations with God. There's none. And uh, you, know, you know the biggest hindrance to the Lord using you and doing great things with you is usually you. You just won't let him do what he wants. And uh, you should come to a point in your Christian life of submission. And after you submit to the Lord, you can sit back later and you'll have a lot of things to ponder in your heart. Just ponder it in your heart. You, you know, one of the greatest things that got me through was looking back through my past and saying, well, the Lord got me through this. The Lord got me through here. The Lord did this. The Lord did that. I know the Lord will get me through. I already learned that. I've learned it. And uh, you should learn that also. The Lord can do anything He wants. Get you through anything you're going through. And uh, there's no limitation with Him. Number three, the pondering in Mary's heart. I see that she's pondering about magnifying the Lord. Look at verse 46. Verse 46. Luke chapter 1, verse 46. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord. Uh, that's to lift one up and to put him on a high pedestal to give him glo uh, glory and honor. And during this time of year, we should always be magnifying the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. You, say, you say, yeah, but Brother Witter, you know that the birth of Christ really didn't happen this time of year. Well, glorify Him any time of the year. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, you can take in a... I know all that stuff. I know Jesus Christ was born in the time around September and October, right in there. I know that. But you know, the world lives in ignorance. And sometimes we can capitalize on their ignorance. <laughs> and uh, you know, you, take in a, you can take a magnet. It's a great time where you can magnify the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, we was able to go out and do all them tracks on that Christmas parade and magnify the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the kids, I went to their school program. They're in a Christian school. I was very impressed. They sung a bunch of songs, and every one of them songs were hymns, except for what? They had to do jingle bells. <laughs> I mean, but, uh, but every one of them were hymns. Hey, you know, that's magnifying the Lord Jesus Christ. If you can't magnify the Lord Jesus Christ during Christmas... You are a spiritual dud. I mean, plain and simple. You ought to be able to magnify Him. Take the opportunity to magnify the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, it talks about His birth as a magnificent time. It says, for unto us, in Isaiah 9, 6, it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon His shoulder, and His name shall be called Wonderful. You ever tell people you have a wonderful Savior? Wonderful. Counselor. You ever tell people that the best counselor you've ever had was the Lord Jesus Christ? The mighty God. There's one for the deity of Christ. His name shall be called the mighty God. Thomas comes up to Jesus Christ and he says, My Lord and my God. And I don't care what the Mormons or JW say. That's who he was. Is God in the flesh. The mighty God, the everlasting Father. Who? Who? This child? He's the everlasting Father? There's the Trinity. How do they miss this stuff? I guess they had to change the words in the verse so they could miss it. I mean, you got to work at missing some of this stuff. The everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. When it came to glorifying God, everybody around Jesus Christ's birth was giving Him glory. 
There was a heavenly host giving him glory in verse thir- uh, chapter 2, verse 13 and 14. It says, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and earth, peace, goodwill toward men. In verse 20, we see the shepherds. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. In verse 25 through 28, you have Simon who takes and gets a hold of Jesus Christ when they come to the temple. And you have Anna praising them. There was only one man who tried to kill the joy of the first Christmas. That was Caesar of Augustus. He said, kill the baby. There was joy to the world. The Lord has come. There was one man who wanted to kill the joy. I'll tell you, when it comes to Christmas time, there ought to be you magnifying the Lord and bringing joy to others. So you say, well, I'm a bah humbug. Shame on you. Don't be a Grinch. There's only one Grinch at the first Christmas, and he was a demon-possessed reprobate trying to kill the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't be a Caesar Augustus. Magnify the Lord Jesus Christ at this time. Have praise on your lips and glorify Him. Glorify His name. The Bible says in Psalms 40, verse 16, it says, Let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. Let such as love thy salvation say continually, The Lord be magnified. We should always magnify the Lord Jesus Christ in this time. Number four, I see Mary rejoicing in her Savior. Look at ver- uh, chapter 2, verse 11. Chapter 2, verse 11. Luke chapter 2, verse 11. It says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. In chapter 1, verse 47, Mary says this, And my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. Jesus Christ came to seek and to save that which was lost. He was the Savior of the world. And He wasn't just the Savior of the world, He was Mary's Savior. She gets to born and raise her own Savior. That's her Savior. And uh, that's my Savior. And it's your Savior if you'll let Him. You say, who does He not save? Those who are not willing to let Him. There's none that perishes on God's will. That's their choice. Life's made up of choices. If Jesus Christ ain't your Savior, that's your own dumb choice. It's your own dumb choice. God doesn't make you do things. He allows you to choose. You're going to choose Jesus Christ or you're going to choose hell? Is He your Savior or not? Have you ever put your trust fully in Jesus Christ as your Savior? He's my Savior. My Savior came and was born. He was raised. He took and lived. 30, I think it's 33 years, and then he died on the cross to pay for my sins. And my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. Do you rejoice in your Savior? You know, this world has troubles. Troubles will come. One of the greatest pieces of advice that I was given shortly after Rebecca died was, A fellow told me, he says, and he'd gone through the same thing. He sat there and said, grab a hold of the joy everywhere you can. He says, the sorrow will be there. You don't have to look for that. He says, look for the joy. He says, do not feel bad about enjoying time with your family when they come. Do not feel bad about enjoying the kids. He says, the devil's going to make you feel bad every time you have joy. Which is true. And uh, he says, just grab the joy where it's at and don't feel bad about it. I asked my uh, grandmother once. She was way up there in years. And uh, especially as a kid. <laughs> and uh, I asked her, Grandma, what's the, what is the um, secret to long life? And we were all just kind of poking fun at her. And she had a slice of small slice of apple and she bit into that thing and smiled and looked at it. She goes, enjoy all the little things in life. 
That's good advice. That's good advice. Rejoice in God, my Savior. God's given you many things to enjoy. Go through life finding things to enjoy and to rejoice in. You know, the sorrow will come. You don't have to look for that. It'll come. It'll be there. You can't get away from that. It's going to be there. But look for the joy. Look for the joy that comes in this time of season. Number five, she pondered how blessed she was. She pondered how blessed she was. Look at verse 48 through 50. For he hath regarded the lowest state of his handmaid. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. And she was blessed. He said she was the blessed Virgin Mary? Yes. And not the way the Catholics teach it. She didn't take place of Jesus Christ. Mary was a woman of lowest state. She was a woman that needed a Savior. Why would she say, my God, my Savior, if she didn't need a Savior? You say, well, Mary was without sin. Baloney. She wasn't without sin. That's a false doctrine. She wasn't no perpetual virgin either. Otherwise, she'd been a lousy wife to Joseph. There's your sin. (laughs) And there's, you know. And uh, so, uh, but... uh, She pondered, she was definitely blessed. Verse 49, For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name, and his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. You want to be blessed? You uh, need to let the Lord do the things in your life that he wants to do. You want to be blessed? You want to have a blessing this Christmas season? Say, how many of you want blessing? Well, you should ponder who Jesus Christ is. His virgin birth showed it. It proved His deity. You should ponder about Him and who He is. You should ponder that He can do anything He wants with you if you will submit to His will. You should ponder that the Lord should be magnified. You want to be blessed? You magnify the Lord Jesus Christ. If you'll exalt Him, He'll exalt you in due time. You magnify Him if you want to be blessed. If you want to be blessed, you should rejoice in His salvation. Rejoice in His salvation. And then the Lord will bless you. The Lord will bless you. There's great blessings to be received by the Lord if you will honor, magnify, and glorify Him. There's great blessings. I want every head bowed and every eye closed. I guess I'm not as long-winded today as I thought. I thought this message would go much longer. But uh, there's joy to be had in this season. Don't miss the joy of Christmas. Don't miss it. Get your eyes on Jesus Christ and enjoy all the blessings that He's given you. Enjoy your family. Enjoy the things that He's done for you. And enjoy His salvation. Enjoy His salvation. Just get a blessing from the Lord. And uh, put your heart into Him. And let Him take care of you. And do things that you never dreamed of. Alright. Let's uh, have a song.